associate for documentary features, and I'd like to welcome back the director of the film, David Franz. Thank you very much. That was just incredible. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I want to invite uh, people from the film to come down and stand with me, starting with Peter Staley. your questions and we'd love to talk about this so um, thanks for staying and um, I don't know what the system is Do people just shout things out or <laughs> okay I see hand up so go ahead hi thank you so much for an amazing film it was beautiful and the courage that you all have everyone who's in the film I, I just want to thank you for educating me and I, I loved every moment of it and for educating me into the courage of the gay community for what you did for society and for for the world we have to thank for what you did I have a question, and I hope I don't insult anyone if I'm inarticulate, so please forgive me in advance. Um, when, when George Bush made his horrible comment about, um, and Jesse Helms made their, their disgusting comments about, you know, why did you change your behavior, that type of thing, I was just curious that why there wasn't some retort. And I realize this is a film about the power of the gay community, and I, I love that. But when they made those horrible comments, there wasn't any retort that, um, you know, uh, he will straight hemophiliacs can have AIDS, and but we need these drugs for those people as well. There wasn't any comment in that. If you could address that, please. Uh, the question is, why wasn't um, uh, George Bush and Jesse Holmes, why weren't they, uh, why weren't, wasn't their consciousness raised, I guess, is the question about their ignorance at the time, and maybe Peter can answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, there was a quote in the movie from Bob Rafsky, uh that I think was taken from the 60 Minutes interview where he talks about um, what so how society you know, treats people in this situation, whether it be uh, heart disease, which can, you know, almost all disease is caused by hum you know, human reactions and human fallacies and human behaviors and how we live our lives and do we as societies and he said that, as a society, do, you, do we condemn those people? And we, obviously we don't for all the other diseases, but for AIDS, we did. Other questions? Uh, uh, sorry. Last year, Sundance had We Were Here, uh, which was about community and healing. And this year, we have this magnificent film about activism. Um, David, you have been able to synthesize a very complicated, personality-driven, politically diverse group of people fighting for their lives. So I would like you, and perhaps Peter, to tell how you wrote this script without falling into the pitfalls that others have fallen into. Uh, the, the question, if people didn't hear, was um, how we uh, were able to pull together the, the story uh, of how to survive a plague 
um, with, without casting blame or, or, or uh, opening old wounds. As you saw, there was a lot of fighting and conflict. Um, and I wrote, I wrote this, um, uh, I, I began with the knowledge of what happened, and I, I brought in both uh, Tyler Walk and Woody Richmond, our two editors, um, to help me find the story. And I knew from the from the start that it was a story that of 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 overcoming, of victory, of of attainment, and and we uh, said amongst ourselves right from the start that we were going to search for the generosity uh, of of all of the characters, of all of the involvement of all the people, and, and to focus on that. Um, and it wasn't a hard search. Um, it was there in the footage. And we went through hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage to get this film, as you can imagine. And it was just uh, the lessons, the human lessons, that, that we learned from, from watching that history all over again were amazing. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I'd um, just say it was, it was a lot of us uh, who have recent, I just saw the film for the first time on Tuesday, and I talked to David Barr about it on Friday, and both of us uh, realized how we had just uh, suppressed remembering this period, and uh, we avoided. Um, and it was the first time that uh, we had been brought back. Uh, and uh, while while it does that beautiful thing, uh, an hour and 40 minutes also can't capture the massive collective that accomplished what happened during those years. There are, were just remarkable people who you don't even see in this film. It's just not enough, enough time to show. I mean, and giants like Martin Delaney and, and others. Um, so it really was people power. It really was collective power. Uh, and it really was uh, the gay movement's most remarkable moment in history, I think. And I hope, I hope it's not just viewed as a, an AIDS film, although in that regard it's, it's just extraordinary, but something much more than that about activism and about creating change for the better. Like Peter, I think, you know, this has been a moment for a lot of people to um, to reopen the memories of what happened during a very difficult period, and I hope that this is going to be a year where a lot more of that is happening. It's going to be the 25th year anniversary of the founding of ACT UP, and I think one of the lessons of this movie, certainly, um, I think, you know, we have the It Gets Better project now, and this idea of things getting better, but I think the lesson of ACT UP was that nothing gets better unless you make it get better and you have to do something about it. And so I'm, you know, grateful to David for putting this story on the, on the screen. Um, I should just say quickly about the footage that uh, this was archival footage shot mostly by activists themselves, some of whom you saw uh, did not survive those dark years. Um, and, but many did, and we have one of them here with us today, Tim McCarthy from Act Up DC. Protest action at the White House where the ashes were thrown on the lawn. Terry? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to, David, thank you. This was amazing. I just wanted to ask Sarah, how was it for you to participate in the project? Um, oh, um, she asked me what it was like for me to participate in the project. And, um, uh, it was a lot of things. It was very difficult, but it was also um, an incredible gift. Um, I tagged along on some of the shoots and some of the interviews and got to watch David and this team assemble. Um, an incredible testament to um, a very special moment for me personally, but for a lot of other people. And, um, uh, well, I guess um, something I said to the cast the other night is that I think uh, a lot of... Um, little girls think their dads are movie stars and that's magnified when they're no longer there so I want to thank David for making my dad a real movie star. <laughs> uh, question? 
Sorry. Uh, do you know, you know who you are? Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. Um, what the activist spoke about, about this being a film of activism and trying to spread that forward, I, I am a widow of another epidemic of suicide. Um, what can you tell me about that and making subjects that don't want to be talked about for what can I learn from you? Uh, could you repeat that? I don't know that I understood it. Ha subjects that that don't want to be discussed. Okay, I'm, I, I get it now. How, how do you make uh, uh, other issues, what are the lessons you can learn from, from this film and from AIDS activism that would help, help people in other hidden uh, uh, conditions and problems bring those problems to the fore? It's a really, really important question. And I wonder if anyone uh, here has an answer. Ron? <laughs> um, I, I think the, the big thing is, what was amazing about AIDS activism is the people who were actually affected, the people who were, had HIV, the people who were sick, uh, the people who were directly affected by it, had the courage to come out and, and speak about it and put their bodies on the line and do what is necessary. Um, I think the first thing about, obviously about getting to topics that don't, people don't want to talk about, talked about, is to talk about them. <laughs> um, the next thing probably is to get a bunch of people, get a bunch of people in a room. I know Facebook and all this other stuff, maybe I'm just old school, but it's like, you can do all this and it's great. Everyone likes it and everyone comes and everyone like, and, and boom, you can have a demonstration and have 5,000 people and that's amazing. But the next day, what do you do? Get in a room with people and talk to one another and that will give you and between you, you may not come up, that, that group may not have the answer there, but they'll talk to other people and keep coming back to that room. And somehow you will figure out your next step. But that's, I mean, I think that's the only, that was the lesson that backed up. I mean, we had 300 people would come every week to a meeting, every week. And after that, I mean, and it just sort of generates an energy and an understanding and a trust. And I think that's, I mean, that's the lesson I think for me. Any other questions? I know Jim has one. Oh, wait, there's one in the back. Can you hold? Let's do the one back in the back corner first. Not to overlook the inspiring struggle of the 80s and the progress of the 90s, I'm wondering about the, the, uh, what happened after 1996 in AIDS activism and in AIDS and in AIDS science research, and I'll answer that. Um, the uh, as far as the science goes, um, you mentioned AIDS vaccines as the next uh, uh, issue that people were researching, and that's ac absolutely true. Only after many years, uh, almost no progress has been made in that area, um, and so what we've seen in pharmaceutical research is just improving on the drugs that we already have. Um, although recently there's been new excitement about the idea that a cure could be within reach within the next decade or so. So science is gearing up maybe for that next fight, which would be exciting. I think 1996, uh, politically and culturally, um, within the community of those afflicted with AIDS, it was a kind of a strange watershed, as was said in the film, where um, it, it wasn't celebrated. Um, it wasn't celebrated because it, the, those drugs are not the cure, um, and it, they didn't save everybody and still don't save everybody. And they're expensive and don't reach most of the people who need them. Um, and and, and the, the political organizing itself kind of fell apart. Um, and the community that was organized around AIDS dispersed. So there was a, a, a kind of a destabilizing moment that I think um, uh, might you know, merit a new film. But, um, uh, but it, you know, we saw really the end of AIDS activism then. Um, and I, and, and that was disappointing to a lot of people. But we're seeing little parts of it now coming back. Uh, another question okay, right there. One question. Okay, one more question, and that's you. Um, so AIDS affects a lot more than gay people nowadays. There's epidemics in like Russia and you know, um, Africa, I've heard. Do you think it's kind of like a, a gift that the gay community is giving to the world to be so vocal and active with activism um, in this period? Uh, the question is, with AIDS uh, affecting uh, more people who are not gay than gay these days, 
was the AIDS activism and the attainments of the AIDS activist community. Is that a, a gift or a legacy that's left to, to the rest of the world? And I'll ask Peter to talk about that. Um, I think so. I mean, we saw uh, the activism that is uh, still in full force in, in southern Africa and throughout the continent of Africa was very much modeled on ACT UP. Uh, TAC, the Treatment Action Campaign, is the leading group in South Africa, um, is, uh, was uh, connected with the uh, U.S. activists from the, from the get-go. And they did, a very, they did a very different game. And, and, and I think that's a lesson of movements as well. I mean, no one is ever alike, and each one needs to make its own path. Um, but uh, they accomplished, uh, in some respects, uh, uh, even more than, uh, than what we had um, in their own country. So, um, since that was the last question, I do want one final thing. This will really feel good. Just three times. Act up, fight back, fight AIDS. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, everybody. I, I owe such a great debt to the people who made this story possible. I also want to express um, gratitude to the people who made the film possible, starting uh, with the Ford Foundation and Just Films, Orlando Bagwell, Terry McGovern from Ford, and without them we couldn't have gotten this thing off the ground. Our, our, our partners at Impact Partners, Dan Kogan and Jenny Raskin, um, and, uh, and especially the uh, Sundance Documentary Fund, um, who've been supportive of us for the last year, year and a half. And I also want to point out our executive producer, Joy Thompson, who spirited this through. Our co-executive producer, Alan Getz, who made this happen. And our entire cast and crew here. Uh, and it was just a wonderful experience working with them. And thank you for sharing David, with us. David, before, before this ends, it needs to be acknowledged that you and all this crew has made a film that shows who the activists were. They weren't just a bunch of boys. They were men and women. They were gay and straight. They were of color. And you show all of that. The media has never shown that before. So thank you.